So it turns out you can harness the power of the sun. I guess I just found that out yesterday. If you want to choose this option for your Land Cruiser or your Toyota Lexus vehicle, we're here to help you. At Slee Off Road, we are introducing a new product line of hood mounted solar panels. Uh, if you look on our website, we have this bundled as a package. The package includes three primary components, will be the primary solar panel itself, the vinyl overlay to protect the paint of the vehicle when you attach the solar panel, and then a charge controller. Uh, with this installed on the vehicle, this is something that will work for you all the time. If you park your vehicle out in the sun and it's um, going to be in storage, this is going to maintain your primary battery. Solar panels can also be used to add additional help to your secondary battery and the vehicle's not running to run things such as lights in the evening or your refrigerator. Seen here is a solar panel on a LX570. This solar panel is rated at 100 watts. The solar panels that are offered for all of the 80 series, 100 series, 200 series, 4Runner, LX, uh, pretty much all the late model Land Cruiser and LX vehicles are going to be rated anywhere from 90 to 110 watts, so pretty consistent through there. In most cases, all the solar panels are going to be a single unit like this. They're going to have some taper to them that follow some of the factory body lines on the hood. In the case of the 16 plus 200 series, based on the design that Toyota gave the hood, it's actually split up into two 45 watt panels, so you'll see two separate panels on there. That's broken down pretty clearly on the website as well. Um, what we see here is this border line, you can see the vinyl panel that installs first. This vinyl panel is a 3M um, air release panel, so it goes down very easily. Um, that is to protect the paint on the vehicle. The separate solar panel comes with just a smooth backing on it. You are going to use a 3M VHB double-sided tape that the installer will provide to attach the solar panel to the vinyl pad. If you have a vehicle that's a little bit older, maybe the paint is damaged on it, you may choose to forego the vinyl and maybe attach the solar panel right to your paint. So it's not 100% required, but in most cases when we're doing the install, we're going to use these two items together. So as if you were to unfortunately have a solar panel failure or want to remove this at some time, you're going to protect the original surface of the paint itself. So the third component of the solar panel system is going to be a charge controller. The bundle that we create is going to be a charge controller here. This can be mounted anywhere in your engine compartment. This is a fully waterproof system. The solar panel on our install here, you'll see the solar panel runs down the hood. We have it nice and tidy here, and then finally attached it to our charge controller. Uh, this is what's going to determine whether you are choosing to charge a flooded battery, an AGM battery, a lithium battery, what have you. Um, that is done using the, the provided app. The secondary option on the charge controller is it does have a load output on an application where you may not have dual batteries and you want to charge your solar, sorry, you want to charge your fridge or run your fridge off of this using the app, you can actually determine the voltage output limitations so that you can turn your fridge off um, within a certain threshold. But either way, this is the charge controller. Again, all three components that are needed on the, the solar system would be the solar panel, the vinyl, charge controller. In some cases, you may already have a charge controller. Seen here in the engine compartment, this vehicle has a dual battery system. This has a Red Arc DC-DC to charge our second battery. This does have a charge controller built into it. So if you chose to only charge the second battery, you could choose to use your DC-DC as a charge controller for your solar panel instead of the secondary one. In this particular application we have here, we are choosing to use our solar panel and our charge controller. Our charge controller is wired to our primary battery. That allows us to maintain our primary battery when the vehicle is parked or stored. And once the primary battery is energized above about 12.8 volts, it then uh, excites the Red Arc DC-DC and then the Red Arc charges the second battery. So in this orientation, we're charging or maintaining two batteries from our one charge controller. You may do it a little differently if you only have a single battery. The app used to communicate with the charge controller is a free app. It's available for both Apple and Android. It's called Solar Life. As you open the app, we can see some things that are very helpful. As we're sitting here indoors with no sun, we can see that we have 14.3 volts coming out of our solar panel. We have zero amps and 0.1 watts. So currently indoors, it's not doing much, but we can see what's going on quickly. We can also see that the battery this is attached to is at 12.8 volts. Again, zero amps going in, and we can even read our, our uh, ambient temperature. We can also see our currently not used, but external load is currently doing nothing because we have it turned off. This is also the same app you would use to either one, determine what type of battery you're charging, uh, whether that be a flooded AGM or lithium. You would also use this app to look at the history. If you're out multiple days, you can see what kind of 
uh, consistent wattage and consistent voltage that's coming in through a period of time. Lastly, whether you believe the Earth is a sphere or the Earth is flat, the sun still does have a path. So one of the limitations of all solar panels is that different times of year, we're gonna have shorter days, uh, the sun is gonna be at different places on the Earth. So unfortunately, one of the important things with having a solar panel is that you will have to be a little sensitive to making sure that the front of the vehicle or where your solar panel is installed is in direct sunlight. Um, unfortunately, in the winter, you're gonna have a little less input. In the summer, you're gonna have a little bit more. There are gonna be limitations to the panel. If you're running a refrigerator all day long, the solar panel alone may not saturate your battery enough to maintain the entire fridge, but it will have a good input to help maintain that. So using the app, you'll be able to make those decisions for yourself, but do be sensitive. Just because you have it installed on your hood does not mean it will 100% take care of all of your needs. Another common discussion that we have here is talking about the difference of solar panel capacity as well as battery capacity. A good way to look at it is like a bucket. If you have a fire hose that you're filling the bucket and you're draining the bucket with a garden hose, you're gonna have a lot of capacity. The fire hose, the filling of the bucket is a good analogy of the solar panel. One solar panel can only generate so much into a battery. The size of the bucket itself is a good analogy of the batteries themselves. So more batteries, larger batteries, bigger bucket, more solar panel, more daylight, more solar panels is filling that bucket more. Obviously all the loads that you have on the vehicle is an analogy of draining the bucket. So that's a good way to think about the system as a whole. So whether you have questions about solar panels, charge controllers, dual battery systems, or larger single batteries, SLE Off-Road is here to help. Please give us a call if you have any questions or visit us on sleeoffroad.com. Thanks for watching.